Welcome to Brave with Lisa YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Bruton and my goal is to inspire you to live bravely in that unique rhythm of grace that God has designed just for you. On this channel, we are going to be hearing from amazing people from all different walks of life who are bravely walking in that unique rhythm of grace and calling that God has designed just for them. I know that as we hear their stories, we are going to learn a lot. We're going to find keys that are going to help us to also walk bravely in that unique rhythm of grace and that unique calling that God has just for you and for me. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Brave with Lisa YouTube channel. My name's Lisa and I'm really excited because today we have Cam Greenwood with us and he is an entrepreneur. He's someone who often lives outside the comfort zone and I know we're going to glean a lot of gold from his story and just the lessons that he's learned along the way so welcome Cam. <laughs> Thanks Lisa I'm glad to be here. Ah, oh, it's I'm so excited to meet with you today and I love your wife as well so we used to hang <laughs> out before she went off to Victoria and oh, no, met I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. so it's so cool that I get to chat with you today um so can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do and what you're passionate about? Yeah, awesome. So my name's Cam, as you have mentioned. Uh, I'm 28 years of age. I uh, live in a little town called Ocean Grove with my wife, Elise. Um, my biggest passion is just myself being in nature, but also getting other people out into nature and um yeah Elise and I find time in nature really healing and restful and um so it's kind of where the overflow of our passion to get others out there to like experience what we kind of love about it and that's flowed into our business that we started called Zorali which is an outdoor brand that's just simply on a mission to, to get more and more people outside and um I guess on a on a deeper level uh, we're also really passionate about getting people outside of maybe themselves or like outside of the preconceived ideas of being led to believe about who they are or or about life or um, yeah whatever it is and just um, we both believe that like everyone on this earth isn't like created for like a mundane life where you just kind of go through the motions but we believe everyone's been created with amazing plans and purposes on their life and we love trying to like edge people closer towards that so yeah that's us in a little in a, in a little snapshot I love it I love that mandate that you both carry together have you always um, been passionate about this has this always been your dream yeah great question um, when I was younger I actually wanted to be like a professional athlete was really into sport and um, kind of thought that was my that was my thing. And uh, as I as I grew up, I realised I probably wasn't tall enough to make the NBA. And <laughs> um, started started exploring other avenues. But I always loved being in nature. I always loved like being amongst the waves. And I actually grew up more in the city. I grew up in Melbourne, but all my holidays were spent at the beach. And I just would lose myself jumping in the waves and just absolutely love that. And um, yeah, as I got towards the end of school, I just had this thing within me that really like struggled against um, just going down the the path that I guess like you kind of push down, like just go to uni, get the degree, do whatever you're like, you're best area of study was in and like just find a job that's comfortable like do the nine to five thing and I, I don't have anything specifically like against that it just it didn't feel like it was for me and um, I just like had this nagging thing within me that really didn't want to do anything that was like that I wasn't crazy passionate about and at the time I was just passionate about being in nature and being outside and surfing so I actually wanted to start a surf brand and um, yeah looking back it's kind of funny when you look back and you think oh I was so naive but I for whatever reason just had the boldness to, to go for it and I 
started a surf brand from the suburbs of Melbourne and um, yeah, just kind of started from there and slowly started to to take off and it's kind of evolved and led to, to what we do today, which is the rally. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been cool watching how that's how that's happened. Wow, I love how you um, kind of bucked the system almost, you know, to be 18 and to be bold enough and courageous enough to go, I just know, I just don't think that's the path for me. And did you, did you have any inner dialogue or was it just this deep knowing and so you just yeah. started this surf brand? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I was like, I was pretty shy growing up. I wasn't like super bold or out there. So it was like, it was probably a little bit surprising to to some people uh, <laughs> watching me do what I did. Um, but I think that's, yeah, that's what's cool about when you live a life of faith, like like yourself is you kind of can draw on this like strength that you get from God when, you know, you feel he's like pushing you towards towards an area like it was a bit um out of the ordinary for me to to go after that dream um especially at such a young age who didn't have like the experience or you know didn't live in the ideal spot to to start a surf brand or, or all those like little excuses that could come out to um reasonably like get you to not do the thing that you want to do um but yeah I just I just felt like God had put that dream on my heart for a reason and um I wanted to to follow that and 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 in following that like help inspire other people to to live passionately as well this was like what I was really passionate about that back then was mm-hmm. this idea of living passionately and I like all I wanted to do was like a- align my passions with like my lifestyle and uh, um yeah I became hooked on that idea and and it, it really caught on like the um yeah I just started with like a Facebook page and and an Instagram and was just like making surfboards in my parents backyard and then um yeah people like took an interest to it and then yeah it um just it went way bigger than I ever would have thought and um turned into a clothing brand like at the peak of it we had customers in like over 40 countries around the world we had store in Melbourne all this cool stuff happening and um met so many amazing people along the way and probably on that on that journey of stepping out I really like found my faith as well like I grew up in a in a Christian family but it was like always I believed what I believed because it was like the thing to believe and then but I think actually taking a a leap of faith and like a risk and essentially like going on an adventure with God um it was really where I, I guess, came into my own as like a, as a young adult, but also really found my faith and, and really um, developed my understanding of like who God is and like his plans for me. And um, yeah, it was a really cool time in, in my life. I love that. And I, I can so relate to that. I find um, when you step outside your comfort zone, like for me, I started Arise you know, yeah. and it wasn't until then that I started to see what was also on my life and the gifts that God yeah, had yeah. within us. Because until so you true. step outside your comfort zone, you don't know what's yeah. laying kind of dormant and what he's placed in you. Did you find yeah. that? Yeah, definitely. Like one of the one of the very unexpected, I guess, gifts or like passions that it kind of came out through that time that I had no idea I had the ability to do was public speaking and like growing up I was absolutely petrified of speaking in front of any audience like I remember in year eight I I literally teared up in front of my English class because I was so nervous and I got the like jitters and I couldn't control it and and it like haunted me all throughout high school and then uh when when the surf brand kind of started taking off I um I was actually at uni at the time but I ended up leaving because it was like going crazy and um I started getting asked by schools in Melbourne to kind of come share my story with them and yeah at the start I was like terrified I was like no way like that's that's not for me that's like yeah um but I knew it was something that I needed to like it was like 
fear had kind of had a hold of me and I just didn't like that feeling. So I made a decision to just give it a crack and like just go share my story just so I can like tick that one off the box and, and like know that I can do it. And I, I did it, but I actually realized like I actually really loved it. And um, just like and my story was really encouraging and helpful to, to people who were like trying to like find their own dreams and, and and overcome fear and and um that was like a really unexpected thing that came from taking that leap of faith it was like oh like there's a whole other part of me that like I didn't I didn't know was there so that's very true <laughs> that is so cool and I love how you identified this is fear and rather than kind of backing away from it, you're like, I'm going to step into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to conquer this fear. And I'm sure yeah. the first time the knees would have been wobbling a bit or the hands. Yeah, shook. yeah. And then you would have just built on that each time because I've, um, you know, heard you speak on podcasts and different things and you're such a gifted speaker and really do inspire. <laughs> so I'm so glad you stepped into that Thanks, fear. Lisa. No, thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's 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 crazy how like the lies that fear tell us about like who we are or um, what we can and can't do, and um, yeah, I think it's yeah, it's sad how many people like have so much greatness inside them that gets silenced by fear. Um, so yeah, that's why I love connecting with people like yourself who are like, you know, help help people just actually connect to like the one true voice rather than, you know, I, it's like for, even for me, like um, it's a daily decision to reject that voice of fear and like actually make space to listen to like what God says and like and, and to be encouraged in that and to actually go after those things and not like be led by fear. I think it's, it's yeah, so important. Absolutely. And can you share a little bit about what fear can sound like or those lies that you, that you experience? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think like it, even, even recently um, I was just saying before we, jumped on how Elise and I um, took like half a week off last week. And um, that was just like, it wasn't really planned. We were just kind of both getting, feeling a bit burnt out. And um, I think myself, I could real, I, I felt like that voice of fear was becoming like louder and louder. And I think it was because I was getting a bit tired. I wasn't like making space for, um, to just like spend time with God in the morning and, and, and to like, for me, that's how I almost like combat those, those lies or that, that like negative voice is like, whether it's just like this morning, I went for a swim in the ocean and just like feeling the sun on my face and just like enjoying God's creation. Um, like when I don't have space for those little things, I just like, make room for like the lies of fear to just like flood my mind and I guess for me those things sound like you're not gonna make it through this thing or you're not good enough to do this thing or this is going to be a flop or anything that like is just comes from a negative place that is like not filled with any sense of like love or or possibility which I I believe is what like God's voice sounds sounds like it's like full of love and possibility mm -hmm. um I've identified as as fear in my life and um yeah it's I, I don't think it's a thing that you just like tick off the list like I've overcome fear or like I've blocked out the voice of fear in my mind like I think it's a daily thing that we all need to like be aware of and um and yeah become aware of when that voice is driving us versus when like God's voice that is filled with love and, and possibilities is driving us. Cause it's, yeah, especially like in today's world where, you know, there's so much noise, it's so easy to get just caught in that trap of, of listening to fear. What, how do you, how do you combat that Lisa? 
Yeah, I, I would actually have to agree with you, Cam. I find fear really does encroach on me when I'm too busy. If I'm listening yeah. to too many voices as well, so even even wonderful voices that you know that mm -hmm. um, have authority and in, in different areas, if I'm taking on too much of what they say and not inquiring of God about what mm. he's actually saying, then it gets confusing. And then that's where fear gets in. So I'm like, oh, should I be doing yeah. that? No, I think I've got it wrong. And rather than yeah. just like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And yeah. what's, what's actually, what have you placed in my hands for now? And yeah. Yeah, it definitely is a daily in a battle sometimes of going, okay, so that's not full of love, that voice, like yeah. you said, it's not full of love. It's not full of hope. So therefore that's not from God. So yeah, I'm not going to listen to that one, but you do yeah. actually have to have space in your, in your world to be able to recognize it though. Yeah, definitely. I so true. Um, so it sounds to me like you're very aware of the rhythm of grace that's on your life, like your own unique rhythm that God's given you for what you and your wife do so is that something that you find changes over time depending on what season you're in yeah great question um yeah I think I think it has for us a little bit like um yeah there's been times when like we've felt really inspired to lean to lean into like a specific part of of our rhythm or of our calling um and then there's been other times to like focus on um just elise and i together as you know uh as as a married couple versus like elise and i as like also business partners now um and yeah but i lo i love how you put that like that rhythm of of grace that god like kind of uh, puts on all of us and um i remember there was like one key time in on our path that uh we really had to decipher like we i think we'll be married for three months next three years next month um and it was like just before we got married we um so like long story short like I was running that surf brand we came into legal trouble with like a, a massive brand from America and essentially we had to like we we're being forced to like close business mm -hmm. um and it kind of coincided with the least and I meeting and we both had that passion for getting people out into nature and um, so we wanted to like take the community I bought, I built and, um, put it into what Zorali is today. Um, but we had like no savings. We had like just no real plan of how it was going to like come together, but we both had this deep sense that God had put this, like what you were saying, like this, like rhythm of grace that was like full of like boldness and, and just like an ability to just go after the things that like God had really put on our on our heart so on the outside it didn't really make sense because we had this dream to like for Elise to leave her job and, and for us to start this outdoor brand but all our surroundings like didn't really make sense but we like I think because we're so um, connected and aware of like what God's kind of rhythm that he'd placed in our on our both of our lives like Elise was very entrepreneurial and very like creative and um loved taking like a risk like loved that feeling of stepping out into faith um with God and like the same for me so it kind of felt like that was kind of like coming together and yeah we could see like the conventional path and the unconventional path so we felt like all right this feels like god's like rhythm for us he's like actually taking the big scary leap of faith and even though you know even family members thought it was like a bit crazy and wild um <laughs> we did it and like yeah we get like look three years back <laughs> and you know it's all like worked out and it's all going well and it's easy to forget like 
what it was actually like in that moment. And um, we need to like constantly remind ourselves of that in these days because, you know, we'll be believing for this thing or thinking about like doing this thing or struggling with this and like believing for this, like whatever it is. And you almost need to remind yourself of like, you almost need to look back at the times where God's like brought you through and, and then believe that like if, if he's done it over and over and over again with all those other times, like why not, why can't we believe the next thing? And that's like saying we've been learning now, but um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, like fear. It's like, a, it's a daily thing to, I guess, stay connected to that unique rhythm that like God's put on your life and um, to like remind yourself of that and to when times I guess you feel like you've been like knocked off your path or you're like down on confidence to like remind yourself of that unique rhythm that um, God's put on you and because yeah everyone has that unique thing and again that's why like I love what you do and even just hearing like Elise like she's attended some of your some of your staff and like just I, I love that because I think we all need um time or like just out of the day-to-day or like out of the ordinary stuff that we do in our life to to really like invest into what that looks like and um so thank you for like for doing that it's, it's, it's really cool it's so important thanks Cam I um I love how you and Elise really work so beautifully together, but you also, you know, you, your own unique people and have your own unique um, interests and passions as well. I have a question for you going on what you're talking about. You were saying, you know, believing again and, and continuing to stretch your faith, I guess. Mm. So I can only imagine that you two have a lot of ideas and a lot of dreams. How do you know when it's time to activate one of them? Yeah, wow. Great question. So good. That That's like been massive for us because we often have big ideas and then we get, I guess we get a bit pulled away from like where we are right now and I think sometimes God gives you like a vision of something or a dream of something and it's like for a bit further down the line. Um, so yeah, we've like, I think, especially as like things have grown for us and become more successful, there's like the opportunities and ideas like become a bit more abundant and it's like more and more important to have like a clear, like laser focus into what, like what you should be focusing on now versus like those other ideas that maybe a little bit more down the line but I think in terms of actually at like when to activate the idea I think um yeah for us it's always been like so important to actually like take a step almost back and just kind of like assess the environment and assess like what you feel like God's kind of saying or leading you into uh, at, before you kind of like with that big decision when Elise kind of left her job. Um, we spent like a lot of time just like praying together and um, just talking about it and like looking at, you know, I think a lot of people I guess probably think we're pretty naive and just took a big leap of faith, which we did in a sense, but we also like did look at like a lot of the, I guess, different scenarios of how it could go. And we kind of just got to a place where we were like, well, the worst thing that ha- can happen is we take this big leap of faith. It doesn't work out. Like we go find jobs and we still have each other. And we've got like, we've had, you know, a, a crack at, at our dreams and, you know, we'll have some good memories and good laughs down the line at how we tried to do this thing that didn't work out. So that was like kind of like, like the worst case for us. And we're like, that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> um, so we that kind of gave us the confidence to, I guess, activate that then. Um, but yeah, it's probably, it's probably almost harder for us now because I think when you have a lot of stuff going on, it's 
it's almost hard to identify like what are the the true ideas and what are just like adding to the noise um but that's where like what we did last week where we just tapped out for like half the second half of the week and went you know camping down the coast and um just kind of spent time together out in nature to kind of have a bit of a reset um just always helps to give us clarity when you know there's a lot of things going on and we're not sure which idea to go for or what thing to do next um yes taking time out especially for us in nature um away from like your phone and like just the, the busyness um always really helps us to find clarity oh I love that yeah so just taking a step back from where you are and yeah if you're in taking a step back and praying and listening to God yeah uh, there was one time in my life um it was just before I met Elise and um yeah it was in the middle of all this this legal stuff with the surf brand and I didn't really I didn't know what to do next and I it was the first time I'd taken a break in my business I um just booked a trip to Norway because I always wanted to go there and I just spent like a month hiking in these like most beautiful mountains and just it was literally like I, I always tell Elise I always like reminisce on those times and um, <laughs> tell her that like it was literally like I was hiking with God. Mm -hmm. I would just like middle of nowhere, like didn't see people for days at a time at, at some stages. And um, I just, it was like a really beautiful time of just like discovering what I felt like uh, God was like calling me into and um, what was like kind of next for me and that, that was like, um, it was an extreme version of like, say what we did last week, where we just, <laughs> just, you know, went camping for a few nights. But it was, I was, I felt like I was really stuck mm. um, at that time in my life. And I, I was really burnt out and um, I felt like I needed to go to those extremes, but it was like, it was so good. It just um, really like set me on a path and then, uh, literally the weekend after I got home from that trip, I met Elise and then everything just kind wow. of flowed from there. So, yeah. I can actually really connect to that story because, and, and, you know, spending time with God away from everything, you actually took yeah. yourself out of your culture, out of yeah. everything and went and hung out with God in somewhere that delights your heart as well. Yeah, yeah. And so he was able to connect you, you know, to who you are, who he says you are, but also that passion that's in you. I just think that's amazing. I had a similar experience where I was working full time as an occupational therapist, you know, hospital with many different caseloads and I was burnt out and I was like, this isn't it. This isn't what God has for me. So I quit my job and went to Austria for three months oh. um, to hang out with God out there. And that's oh. where he told me to, that I'll be running women's retreats and yeah. kind of gave me a different um, or a, a clearer heart for what he has on my life. And so, yeah, so I can so uh, connect with, you know, you heading off to Norway and yeah. hiking with God. And I think that's something that is lost in today um, is just that permission to mm. step out of life and yeah. have that time with God, whether it's by yourself or with your beautiful wife or even with your family and yeah. remove from that, you know, day to day, you know, hustle and bustle. So true. Well, one of the things um, when Elise and I were camping last week, I came to this like epiphany. I was like, I think I'm addicted to progress. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, like I, I was like reading about um, dopamine and I was like, I think like I actually am addicted to, to progress. And um, it was like, yeah. And then Anyways, after like a few days of just like being off my phone, off email, off progress, I like felt so much better. And I think um, it's a good reminder for myself because I think um, especially when things grow and you got more responsibilities and things, it is harder to like pull yourself away and step back and do the things that fill up your soul and like 
give you clarity and it's it's like easy to just get caught like running 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 running, trying to keep up so yeah absolutely that's so true and and it's like a reset isn't it when you Mm. stop everything and yeah and are you feeling in a place of rest now yeah 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 definitely after after last last week it's yeah I think we've like Elise and I have identified that we need to build into our schedule like a a rhythm where you know we still like working hard like going after our ideas plans whatever but then we're like pulling back so we're um we're planning to do like six weeks on and then the seventh week and we got like a really small team so we can't really like just fully disconnect but the after the six week block we're gonna like pull back for a week and we'll still be like a little bit present for like a few of those days but then we'll have a few days where we just completely tap out and so that's the plan so you have to check in (laughs) oh kim that's a great way of maintaining that rhythm of rest and you know, that unique rhythm that he has for you and Elise. And yeah, and it's also giving permission to your team as well to find their own rhythm as well. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah, definitely. Cam, thank you for coming on. Thank you for just sharing your wisdom and being so honest about, you know, those fears that you've had and how it is really an everyday thing that we each have to do and each have to face. So yeah. do we step into it or do we pull back and how that space to spend time with God and take a step back really is a powerful tool in your life. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. It's uh, great chatting. Thanks for joining me on Brave with Lisa. I hope that it has inspired or impacted you in a small or large way. Feel free to comment, to subscribe and share with some friends. And please join us next week on another conversation we will have here on this channel on Brave with Lisa.